All right, Periscope time. Got people joining. Essential Mummy joining again. Nice to have you on the stream for the third time. Hey guys, welcome, welcome. Where are you all tuning in from today? Hey, I need to ask, what is your, what is your real life name? What is, I, I know your handle, but what is your real life name? Essential Mummy. I keep referring to you as, as Essential Mummy. Crystal, Crystal, thank you so much for tuning in to all my streams. It's been really, uh, it's been really great having you come on to every stream and, and you're always great in the comments. So thanks for tuning in. And uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to see people coming back again and again. How's everyone else doing today? It's, uh, it's uh, weather's better here in Auckland today. The sun is starting to come out. Hey there, about 94. How's everyone going? Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about good. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. What um, what do we got? Uh, Jill Jill Bull uh, Jill Bull. Sorry, Jill. I'm great. Thanks for tuning in today, Jill. And so today, um, similar to the last few streams that I've been doing, I'm going to be talking about this book here. I've been talking about books that I've been reading. And uh, today I'm going to be talking about this book here, which is called The Miracle Morning. And it's by a guy called Hal Elrod. So that's The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod, uh, for those of you who are into, into your books. And I'm actually from the last stream that I did. It sounds like a couple of you may already have this book and it's on your reading list. And uh, yeah, so today I want to give you five reasons why I think you should read this book and five kind of key things that it's going to teach you really. Um, so as usual, if you if there's anything useful that I say, it's really useful for me to to get the hearts on the screen when I when something's useful. Hey, from Venezuela, uh, Venezuela, uh, thanks. Um, yeah, it's it's great to get the the hearts on the screen for f just so I can get some feedback on the kind of information that's useful. Hey, Rose, thanks for joining. How are you doing? Let me know where you guys are tuning in from. Uh, we usually get a pretty good mix on the stream, so yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in. All right, well, I'm going to get on, uh, get started. But yeah, let me see the hearts for anything that you guys find interesting. So to kick this off then, five reasons why I think you should read this book. Uh, Kodiak, USA. Uh, AK, what, what state does AK stand for? Sorry for my, about my bad geography. Hello from Portland, Oregon. Nice. Hey from New Zealand, Auckland, New Zealand. Um, okay. Alaska. Oh, sorry. Alaska, of course. Yeah, Alaska. Right. Columbia. Hey from Columbia. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, so yeah, as I was saying in the intro, today I'm talking about five reasons why you should read this book. It's called The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. Hey, Garrett. Garrett's Graphics. Hey, Garrett. Thanks for joining. Um, so yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get started then uh, without any further ado. So the first reason that you should read this book is it's, it helps you to realize that uh, you are actually worthy and you are deserving of everything that you want in life. I think there are a lot of people out there or the, there are a lot of supposedly successful people out there who we look at and we're like, wow, I wish I could have that. They, they either it's like they've got a good income, they're really happy and successful, they've got a really good family life or whatever, however you define success and you can define success in many ways. Thanks for the hearts, guys. Thanks for the hearts. You can define success in many ways, but so often in society, we put these people on a pedestal and we think, wow, they've really got it sussed. They're doing really well. And this book will actually teach you very early on that you too can have everything that you want in life in terms of your uh, like finance, finance uh, your personal health and well-being. Um, no matter what your goals are, no matter what your background, no matter what stage of life you're at, there is no reason there is no reason why you can't have everything that you want. It's just a case of spending some time working on the things that you need to do to, to get it. And so that's the first reason you should read this book is it's just going to help you to just overcome this, this feeling that you can't have all of these things or to, to, it's going to remove all of that self-doubt that you might have. Uh, I'm, I'm just reading some notes here, but according to the book, approximately 95% of our society settles for far less than what they want in life. 95% of people settle for less than what they want in life, wishing they had more living with regret and never understanding they could do, be and have everything that they want. Limiting beliefs. Um, yeah, I mean, exactly. And, and that's the first thing it teaches you is it, it, it teaches you to stop um, living like this and it actually removes that self-doubt and having these these limit, limiting beliefs uh, like Crystal said. 
And so you can have everything that you want. That's the first reason why I think it's, it's a great idea to read this book. Uh, the second reason is that it'll help you develop a morning routine that contributes to you uh, creating the success that you need. So ho however you define success, if it's in terms of your like personal finance, health, um, whatever, you want, whatever you want, it's going to help you develop a morning routine that really supports that. Um, turn them into affirmations. Um, Crystal, have you, have you read the book? Because um, actually affirmations is one of the things that Hal talks about. Is, is positive self-talk. So affirmations, for those who, who may not understand, is this, it's the self-talk, um, and it's how we talk to ourselves. And affirmations are the statements that you can say to yourself on, on a regular basis that really help you build self-confidence and really help you to reaffirm what it is that you're trying to do. No, but it sounds like uh, everything, uh, everything that you do. Fantastic. If you're, if you're using affirmations already, then, then great. You're already using principles from this book. Oh, you have an energy coach. Wow. Um, what what exactly does an energy coach do? I mean, I, I guess it's someone who helps you to uh, get more energy, uh, you know, improve your energy, I guess. Um, so it's going to help you develop a morning routine that really supports uh, supports you in terms of helping you create the success that you want in life. It, uh, fundamentally, it is a book about personal development, and um, it takes you through things like yeah, uh, reciting affirmations, um, uh, journaling is another big one, reading in the mornings, um, practicing silence, and just just you know taking some time to be comfortable with your thoughts. Um, and so it's going to help you develop a routine that really supports um, success in your life. The body, uh, the body energize, uh, energy is balanced. Okay, I understand. I see. Hi, uh, Maeve here, Kiwi living in Aussie. Hey, Maeve, how's it going? Whereabouts in Australia are you at the moment? I hope it's uh, nice and hot over there. Thanks for tuning in. So that's the second reason why I think you should read this book, is that it's just going to help you create this morning routine that supports... Uh, supports you in terms of being able to pursue a lifestyle, a successful lifestyle, no matter how you define that. Um, the third reason why I think you should, everyone should read this book is that, um, it, it, or sorry, the, the third reason, the third kind of key takeaway from the book is that it, it, it's really saying that how you wake up in the morning, oh, sorry, what do I, not bad, thanks, Brisbane, and it's overcast, lol, great periscope, by the way, thank you very much. Thank you, Brisbane. I've been to Brisbane a couple of times. It's really beautiful over there. Um, uh, yeah, thanks Thanks for tuning in. And hello from, from Auckland, of course. So yeah, point number three is that um, it highlights the importance of morning routines. And, and it's this idea that how you choose to wake up in the morning um, fundamentally influences how you feel throughout the day. Thanks for the hearts, guys. Keep those hearts coming. Um, I really like to see the, the support on the screen. That's really cool of you. Um, so yeah, it's this idea that how you wake up in the morning fundamentally influences how you feel for the rest of the day. If you wake up and you rush your morning routine, you wake up late, for example. In, in fact, yeah, imagine that. Have you ever had a time when you wake up late and you just rush through your morning routine and your whole, the whole rest of your day? Yep, yeah, totally agree with that. So the whole rest of your day is, is thrown off because you, you, um, you've rushed the morning. Uh, yeah, lots of hearts there. So if anyone's ever felt like this, lots of hearts, because uh, we've all been there, right? Like when you rush your morning routine and, and you just can't come down. I've been been there and you get into the office and it's like, <sighs> you know, like you really can't come down for it. I have to prep for my morning the night before. Yeah, exactly. Like that's a really good point is, and they go through this, he goes through this in the book, is that often the um, today sucked. Did you wake up late? Um is that, yeah, you often have to prep the night before, work out how you're going to spend your morning, and even things just like getting your, your gym bag ready is something that I'll do the night before so that I can just grab my gym gear and go. Um, but, yeah, so point number three really to sum up is that um, it's, it, it's just – it's making you realize that how you wake up and, and, and how you spend your morning will, will determine the, the, um, how your day runs, basically. If you get up and you can spend some time working on yourself, being productive in the morning, no kids. Uh, kids got up before me. Uh, wow. Um, so it's... If you can spend some time in the morning really investing in yourself, going through these kinds of activities, like we've got affirmations, mummy needs her time. <laughs> you've got affirmations, journaling, reading, being, being silent, meditating, all these sorts of personal development activities. It's going to help cultivate a positive mindset that is going to just set you up for a really positive and productive day. Um, and so it's just reinforcing the importance of these morning routines. 
Uh, the fourth reason why I think you should read this book is that, and I, I truly believe this, is that waking up early and invest, using that time to invest in yourself in terms of personal development and using that time to, um, to do something that you really care about and do something that you enjoy is incredibly rewarding. My morning, my, uh, morning routine from about 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. is one of my favorite times of the day because I, can get, I get up and I'm working on my website and my blog and things like that. And it's incredibly enjoyable to get up and do something that really matters to me and it's something I really care about. Time for body, mind, and spirit daily. A exactly. It's, um, it's incredibly rewarding to actually take time to, to develop those things, the body, the mind, the spirit, and to just take some time to, um, to really invest in yourself and do something that you care about. It's incredibly rewarding, not just for your personal productivity, which is going to help you out through the rest of the day, but um, of course, it's just going to help you for success in life as well by just helping you kind of tweak your mindset and be a bit more positive. Um, and if you think about it as well, when else are you going to spend time on these activities? If you want to really pursue personal development, if you want to spend time working on your goals, um, thinking about what you want to get out of life, if you want to spend time um, on things like affirmations and doing things like meditation, when else are you going to do that? Start with five minutes each. Yeah, then magically, um, sorry, magically make time for more. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you can, you can start small. Your, your, mir your miracle morning doesn't have to be like an hour. It doesn't have to be long. You could start with just a few minutes of, of these, these key ex exercises, um, like yep, visualizing your future is a really good one. And uh, in the book, he actually says that um, people who visualize their goals are far more likely to achieve them because they can really see themselves achieving them. Um, so, but yeah, if you think about it, when else are you going to spend time doing these things? When you start your day, you, you start to get busy, you're, in, you're into your day, you're doing your whatever you're doing at uni or, or at work or whatever it is that you do, you're not really gonna, it's gonna be too busy to take time out to do these sorts of things. Um, and in the evening, often we're very tired, you know, we just want to come home and relax, or maybe you've got to um, cook dinner, spend time with the family. And so the evening can be a tough time as well. Um, so really the morning is one of the only times, or it's, it's really, I see it, an ideal time for actually doing these sorts of things, you know, uh, visualizing your goals, reciting affirmations. Hi, Paul, thumbs up, Linda. Hey, thank you, Linda. Thanks for tuning in. Nice to have you in the, in the stream today. Uh, thanks for tuning in. So yeah, it's if you, I, I really do think that the morning is the best time to spend on these sorts of activities because during the day you're going to be too busy and at night you're just going to be too tired. So even just getting up half an hour earlier, I think, can have a massive impact on how you feel. Um, so yeah, that's that's the fourth reason is that it just feels incredibly rewarding um, getting up to to spend time doing something you care about and and investing in yourself. And then the fifth and final reason why I think this is a great book for everyone to read is that it'll help you become a calmer, less stressed, happier, and just more content person. Through all of these activities that we've already talked about, like meditation, journaling, reading, um, uh, visualizing your goals, affirmations, all of these things really do support your, your attitude and this idea of like just... Um, being very positive as a person. Um, you, it helps you get very clear on your goals, so you have a very clear idea of where you're headed. It's gonna help you to prioritize your tasks, work out how you need to be spending your time and things like that. Uh, and things like meditation in particular, I, I mean, I've been doing it on and off for the last year. I need to get back into it, if I'm honest. But meditation, in even just five minutes or 10 minutes of meditation can have a massive impact on your stress, the, your ability to just remain calm and content throughout the day. Um, do you read in the mornings or do you listen to audio? Uh, good question. So in the mornings, what I will do is, when I'm actually working, I will put some music on, generally fairly calm music. Um, and then when I go to the gym, I will then listen to a podcast. And there's a number of podcasts that I listen to. And they're all generally like, yeah, kind of business-related or self-help-related podcasts. And uh, I really enjoy listening to those um, at the gym. And if I'm, if I'm driving, I'll, I'll put them on in the car as well instead of the radio because the radio really sucks. Um, I'd much rather listen to an educational podcast and then reading, reading comes, uh, yeah, me too. So that's great. Yeah. Reading comes later. I'll take a book with me wherever I go. And maybe if I can grab a few minutes at lunch to flick through some pages or in the evening, the evening is really when I spend most time reading is before bed. Um, uh, although recently we've been watching a documentary called The Jinx. I don't know if anyone's seen that. We've been watching The Jinx. That was really good. So uh, the last few nights I haven't been reading, which is bad, but I'll be reading tonight. 
And, um, and the weekends as well, of course, is I'll, I'll definitely spend a good chunk of time reading at the weekends. Uh, but mornings for me, generally more a bit of music and, and podcasts. Um, so, yeah, that was my fifth and final reason. It's, it's, it's just going to help you become a much uh, happier, less stressed, more, more content person. So, uh, yeah, again, it's, it's The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. If I've raced through this too quickly, remember you've got the replay that you can go back and listen to. Um, thanks again for tuning in. I also do have a book summary. So I've summarized this entire book. It's on my website. If you head to paulminers.com, that's paul, M-I-N-O-R-S.com, you can read the summary. You can also download the PDF. It's completely free. And I've, I've summarized each chapter. Um, so you can download the PDF and get that for, uh, um, you can get that along with all of the other book summaries. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, along with all the other book summaries that I've written, you can download all of them in, in one go. So that's available on my website. So thanks again for tuning in. Uh, Crystal, you've been awesome in the comments. Thank you uh, so much for tuning in. Um, yeah, all nice thanks. Yeah, um, it's, it's great to have some repeat people coming into the stream. And in terms of books for next time, I actually haven't got any ideas what I want to cover next. Uh, good work. Thank you. Um, if I just have a quick look, I might be able to give you a clue now as to what I might talk about next time. Uh, follow me. I definitely will after this. Um, hang on a second. Let me have a look. Uh, we've got Influence, which is a marketing book. The Magic of Thinking Big. The Obstacle is the Way. You know what? I'll have a think. I'll have a think and, and I'll, I'll tweet something out. Um, but thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, follow me on Periscope and I'm going to be talking more about books and I need to do a couple of um, Outlier. Oh, I haven't read Outliers in so long and I, I haven't got a summary on it. Um, keep up the great work, Paul. Thank you. Thank you very much, Linda. I haven't read Outliers in so long and I didn't write a summary. Um, the best Periscope. Thank you, guys. I really, I really do like the, the, the positive comments. It means a lot to me. Um, so I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I haven't read Outliers in ages. Um, because, yeah, and, and I didn't write a summary on it at the time. It was before I was writing summaries. So I'll tell you what, I need to read, read that again. Um, and I'll, I must do a summary on it because, yeah, I know it's a great book and I need to read more of Malcolm Gladwell's stuff because I know his stuff is really good. Um, but yeah, good, good recommendation. Did you see it? I can't, can you see it? Oh yeah, there it is, isn't it? That's Outliers. Um, yeah, I'll pick a book out. I'll, I'll tweet something out. So yeah, thanks again, guys, for listening. Uh, I really like, uh, appreciate the, hom uh, the, the hearts and the comments. I nearly said comments, which is hearts and comments. Um, yeah, there we go. Thanks. See you guys. Catch you guys next time on Periscope.